Welcome to the Major's Papers. Today we're going to talk a little bit about conventions um, and what they mean to the hobby, uh, what I have experienced myself, and being part of a larger community. But before we get into that, it's time for some hobby progress. Now, as you know from last episode, I finished up the night, which should be right there. <laughs> All right. He's just looking at me saying, um, when are you going to finish me? Because I still have to do a base on that night. So coming up with a base for that night seems to be a little more tricky. I need to commit to something. I have four months to get it done, which believe it or not, is not really a lot of time. Not when uh, you're a teacher and the year got to get the grades in. All the stuff is going on. Test and blah. It's crazy. All right. Um, so it's not really a lot of time to be able to get that done, but I need to come up with a thematic base, something that really encapsulates my army. And if you've seen past videos of mine, you're going to know that it's like rocky crags at the base of my army um, and, you know, snow and like just really desaturated uh, stonework. Uh, and that's going in and I throw a couple of, you know, skulls in for the mix, all different kinds of skulls because, you know, space wolves dominate all. All right. That's just my opinion. All right. <laughs> um, so I'm having all these uh, ideas coming into my mind and I'm, I'm sketching things. This is what I'm doing. I'm sketching things. So whenever I do a project and I have to come up like either freehand or something like that, I like to sketch different things. So I look at... Um, different scenes like epic scenes telling a story and what i do is i try to sketch it out knowing logistically what size base i have um, and limiting that little base that little scene in order to tell a story uh, because in order to really sell a miniature for competition painting, you need to be able to tell a story with your miniature. You need to be able to um, invite someone to your world so this way they can experience what you think, in your heart of hearts, that scenario might be. Like the theme of your army, the essence, the life's blood. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's so easy to get so emotionally attached into these pieces that, you know, uh, you know, I know that judges, when I submit it into competition, are not going to be as emotionally attached to these things as I am, right? Um, so they're going to see things in a different light and look, uh, have a bit of objectivity to all the pieces. And um, I can't wait for the feedback that I'm going to get from all these professional judges when I come into that competition. Now, I want to go for the gold. Of course I want to go for a gold. Do I think I might get a gold? Not really, uh, but I am going to put my heart into it. And either way, I walk away with some valuable feedback and I walk away with an epic model for my gaming table, like really for battle reports and for you guys so I can share it with you. See, one part of this hobby is actually painting, but it would, I think it'd be too selfish just to keep it all to myself. I have to share it with others, you know? We're like, oh, wow, yeah, this is how I did this. And, you know, I'm, I'm full disclosure kind of guy, you know? I want to make sure that you understand what I understand, what when I understand that so this way you can do the things that I do and improve upon it and get even better than I am. Um, but on to more hobby progress. So while I'm thinking that out and I'm sketching that out, I always have to be painting something. Now in the summer, my airbrush, uh, Badger Chrome, Renegade, that's what I use. Uh, I don't know if it's the best or not, but it's definitely what I use and I get great results with it. Um, that broke. And the good thing about Badger Company is that if you send it to them with a, with a shipping and handling fee, they fix it for free, for life, the end, right? Uh, the only thing is it just it takes a very long time for them to come back to you, you know? Um, so I do have, I did buy another airbrush, which should be coming any month now. <laughs> just in case this happens again, where my airbrush breaks again, I'll have a backup copy. But in the summer, I digress. Uh, in the summer, my airbrush, you know, caputi, and I threw it into the boxy and sent it out to get shipped. So in the meantime, I had nothing to do on my hobby table. And this is a summertime for a teacher, so I had some a little bit of time. I really wanted to get some accomplished. Actually, I really wanted to do a lot of videos to preload it so when the school year starts, I won't have to think about videos. I'll just, you know, have a pre-release schedule that'll keep coming out, and videos keep coming out for you guys um, with me doing very little 
little to nothing because all the work is done preemptive, like a preemptive strike. Uh, so this way you can have content every week and I won't have to drive myself crazy trying to find time to edit and put it up and you know, quality and all that great stuff. So I had all this time and in that time I took my rattle can, which is my, you know, spray can of paint and a primer. And what I did was primer a whole bunch. I thought it was a great idea. Just primer a whole bunch of terrain. And I just kept on priming up terrain. The weather was great. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm still painting that terrain. Like that was the summer of last year. And this is going to be the summer of this year. It's almost a year. And I haven't finished painting that terrain, but I'm getting close. So while I'm thinking about something to do with the night, I'm actually... Uh, painting up some terrain. So this is part of my hobby progress. Um, some more terrain. I finished the Sir Kristen War Shrine, uh, which is up there somewhere back in that corner. Um, <laughs> but these are additional pieces of terrain. This actually came in the uh, Renegade uh, box set, which are two knights and terrain. So I have all these bits of terrain uh, that I'm working through. Uh, great for the gaming table, and it's going to be really great when I put it up on for... Um, you see, I get all the little wires and stuff. <laughs> uh, me and my details. Um, Ian, you're right. Um, nuts over details. Uh, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. I love it. Uh, so I'm getting all these painted up uh, and some side railing going on here. All right. Uh, pretty cool stuff uh, for the sector Mechanicus terrain. Don't even get me started on the sector of Imperialis terrain. I have a ton of this stuff. And, you know, it's all on the bottom down here. I don't know if you can see that. That's all terrain down there. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of terrain, right? Um, so that's going to be a project for, you know, an in-between project. And I like to do in-between projects because I have my main project, which is the piece for the Nova Open. And then I have my in-between projects, which at this point is a whole bunch of terrain. You see, I got a little... Uh, Got a little radar thing going on there. Got some three blips like it's coming to get you. All right, anyway, um, I'm having a lot of fun painting these guys up. And while I'm thinking about what kind of base I want for my competition model. If you have any suggestions for a base for my competition model, you know, throw it down in the description. Uh, Throw it down in the comments, and this way we can have a conversation about it. You know, maybe I get some inspiration from you. That would be cool. Help me win the gold at the Nova Open uh, by giving me some inspiration. Um, let me know. I do want to tell you on another race uh, that t-shirts went out, and you guys are absolutely amazing. Uh, I spotted TMP t-shirts being worn by... Itic, uh, Nick Beer from Itic Beer 40K, uh, another YouTube channel. If you haven't checked him out yet, check him out. He's a great guy. Uh, he really isn't a hobby, and he loves his Necrons, although not better than the Space Wolves, in my opinion. Well, I'm partial. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for wearing a shirt and wearing it proudly. You, you make it look good, guys. Uh, also, Atomic Dog Scale Model Freak. Dude, holding it down. I saw that last video, sporting a TMP shirt, like rocking it. That's right. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, Dead Gamer. Dude. Dead Gamer has actually been putting response videos to my videos. We're actually having conversations and giving our opinions about the same topic. It's sort of like having a conversation via you via YouTube. It is. It is having a conversation via YouTube. It actually reminds me uh, in the 80s and 90s when rappers from one end would have a competition against rappers from another end. It didn't end so well, but it was like through the songs, they would battle each other. I think it was, that was really, really cool how they used to do that. Um, so that's what it feels like to me. Call me real old school, right? Um, so Dead Gamer holding it down, representing with the TMP shirt. And of course, my brother's at the Frost and this dude, Wolf Brother Mythos is rocking them TMP shirts, always hooking a brother up, just letting you know, representing the TMP part of the TMP Legion. TMP Legion is actually found on Facebook, so if you want to join, feel free to join. All right, and show off your work, what you're working on. If you have any advice, there's plenty of painters up there willing to give you advice. If you want some critiques, criticisms, uh, we're up there to give you some feedback too. So we're all about helping people. All right. All righty. So that's what I wanted to say about the hobby progress when it comes to miniature painting and people representing. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about hobby computer progress. That's right. Since uh, 
you guys have donated this uh, a lot of money <laughs> frankly amazing uh to be able to help me build my computer along with you know my birthday money and, and kind of got money and i get kind of safe money every paycheck in order to get so in, in with all that in, the time has come, right? At first, I was so gung-ho on getting a Mac. Like, a, a all-in-one iMac was what I was going to get, period, full stop. Uh, and, you know, I was going to get um, the editing software there uh, as well and just get the entire suite, one-stop shop, click one button, it's in, it's gone, and we're good. But so many people have been telling me the same exact thing. They said, Rob, you're actually paying a lot of money for mediocre power. Now, granted, there's a 5K monitor on that, but, you know, if you don't have the graphics card to be able to really push that to its limit, like a gaming computer would, you're really not gonna get everything you want out of that. And you can't upgrade it. It's not like you can later on add a component to your iMac. No, they kind of seal that stuff. And after a while, it just goes bad and branding is go bad and, and you just end up without a computer like I did when I had my MacBook Pro. Uh, worked terrifically until it died, uh, graphics card died, nobody wanted to touch it, period. Nobody wanted to really fix it. I'd have to go third party and they're kind of iffy and then it's like $500 for a video card, an antiquated one, not even a new one. And you know, it was just so much hassle and people have convinced me. Now, I used to be a PC guy before I went into Mac and now I'm thinking swinging back, this is a pendulum here, back to the PC. And the reason why I'm gonna go back to the PC is because A, the items are cheaper. B, I get more for my money. C, um, I get to be able to build my own computer and upgrade it whenever it needs upgraded. So if something becomes outdated, I can actually put a component in, refresh the entire system, and I am good to go. So when it comes to actually computer systems and, and handling the power, the raw, absolute, massive amount of power that I really want to obtain, well, you know, it's better to optimize uh, and get that power via PC because if I wanted to get the same power via Mac, I'm talking about a $10,000 computer, easy, you know? So uh, no, that's not gonna happen. Uh, my limit was 3,000, that was the basis of the thing. So I went shopping and really going through a lot of different stuff and that's the process I am in now, all right? I have a component tree mapped out, I know what I wanna get and what I'm gonna do is go through a process. Now, I'm not a completely there monetarily. In other words, 3,000 is the budget. Uh, I'm at the $2,000 mark, thanks to you guys really helping out. So I'm at the $2,000 mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy one component per week and slowly build the computer because every, um, Every paycheck, I mean, every every paycheck, I'm gonna put away money. Uh, every paycheck, I'm gonna buy a new component. I'm gonna start with the most expensive thing, which is the processor, and I'm gonna show that on the show next week because um, it's in the mail. I've committed, all right? So there's that. That's the hobby progress when it comes to the computer being built, and I'm really excited because I'm going to get the type of editing monster that I want that I can put show quality material up for you guys. So battle reports will be absolutely insane. Uh, going to conventions and reporting will be absolutely intense and actually getting the quality that you guys deserve and that I enjoy actually making. So it's part of my art, so to speak. So today I wanna to touch upon conventions. Uh, I recently uh, did a paint and take or helped do a paint and take um, with your hobby place here in um, West Virginia. That's actually next date over. Uh, I'm in Maryland. <laughs> so in West Virginia, uh, the store, your hobby place actually helped, uh, was a vendor at this convention here, 1D4Con. Oh, oh, oh. 
Ha ha! All right, 1D4 gone, which is right here. You tricky bugger. Uh, and that's right, uh, I was there as well, and I did part of the paint and take, and I met some pretty amazing people. And it was pretty cool just to hang out with people, paint a little bit, talk with people. Um, the owner at... Um, the owner at Your Hobby Place actually bought us lunch, which, wow, that was amazing, right? And, you know, it was just an experience that I couldn't forget. Now, a lot of people are kind of turned off by conventions. It's like, well, there's not one in my area. Well, I didn't even know 4D Con exists. And even if I did, it was more catering towards D&D, so I kind of, it would have been dismissive towards me. And I'm going to tell you this much. If you're dismissing these things, you're actually losing out on a lot of things because a lot of people think of conventions, they think of one thing, competitive gaming. Gaming uh, where there's some power gamers out there trying to take you down with everything they got and that's fun. Uh, but that's not the only thing that's there. You need to see, um, I was hosting that paint and take where you just come over, right? Um, and you ask questions, well, how do I do eyes? I remember teaching someone how to do eyes. Uh, well, is this your first miniature that you've ever painted? It is, let's start you on a process, all right? So we're gonna go into your, your base colors, right? Uh, we're gonna get into your washes, we're gonna get into your highlights and a three-step process. Uh, and if you have any specific questions, again, eyes, how to dry brush and little techniques like that, everything was explained, everything was, um, actually divulged upon and people really just had a chill experience coming and painting and it was a lot of fun for everyone but that's not all um yes there are vendors out there and some of the vendors that you have out there are like independent people you know with 3d printer putting out some items there uh there were items such as you know uh counters uh there were items uh, things to hold your you know pots of washes so they don't tip over that was pretty cool and you know there's a whole bunch of books and an rpg uh dice and and all these kinds of things even a larper uh section in there gets you into larping as well so all the vendors was pretty cool in the vendor hall um but there's also board games. Now, board games are more widely acceptable in a hobby than miniature wargaming. So board games is there. So it's not like, even if you're not into miniature wargaming, even if you're not into D&D, which it is actually kind of popular now. Um, if, even if you're not into those things, there are board games where you could just sign up and play. And there's lists that you just have to sign your name in and you're in. Uh, there was, speaking of D&D, there was D&D, there was Pathfinder. It was cool because I kind of went into the room and they have these starter characters just kind of laying on a table. Kind of, even if you don't know how to put one together, just grab a character, go into a gaming table, and just roll some dice and have some fun and, you know, become the hero you've always meant to be, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's a lot of excitement and you meet these amazing people. Now, if you don't know about con uh, conventions in your area, even smaller ones or larger ones, I'm going to go to the Nova Open this year. I recommend going to local gaming stores, not just one, there may be more in your area. There's this app, uh, Uncle Adam at Tabletop Minions puts out, it's called Game4, and you can actually look up my app to see if there's any local events in your game stores in your area. Go over there and ask the people in the know what's going on, and that's your uh, local friendly uh, gaming store. Just go in and say, hey, how you doing? Uh, this is my first time in this store. Uh, but I, I'm just really interested in growing community. I want to know more about the people here. I want to know more about conventions in the area. Let me know. And believe me, any store worth their salt that actually wants to make money, they're going to know about conventions in their area, especially with items that they may want to sell. Oh, um, so all in all, just to wrap it up, uh, going to conventions and actually meeting people and expanding community is only a good thing. Don't be intimidated by them. Be able to go out there and have some fun. You may actually get bigger experience than, you're actually, than you actually anticipated and you walk home with memories that last a lifetime. Well, that's pretty much it for this week. What do you think about conventions? Are you going to a convention? Would you like to go to a convention? What conventions are in your area? Have you asked the local gaming store to see if there are any conventions in your area? Have you checked the Game4 app to see if there's other stores that you may be able to visit? Again, this convention was 20 minutes away. 
And I had no idea, right? It's been going on for years. <laughs> now, if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.